If you're thinking of buying a condo in Toronto, these are the seven things that you need to know. The real estate expert, Tom Story. Tom Story. Tom Story. Quick world of page. Tom, good to have you in this afternoon. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, my name's Tom Story, and I'm the team leader of the Story team. And we sell properties in Toronto and specialize in the condominium market. And in today's video, I'm going to go over the seven things that I think every buyer needs to think about the seven tips before you purchase a condo in Toronto. But just before I go into that, if you are new here, feel free to subscribe or like this video. It definitely helps the channel out without any further ado. Let's jump right into it. Tip number one is expectations. When you're buying a condominium, you have to know what you're getting yourself into. And over the past five years, condos have done very well in terms of price growth, but we're not always going to see double digit price appreciation in condos every single year. So whatever market you're buying in, but in this specific case, let's talk about Toronto, the 40 year average is about 7%, but I'm going to go in and say that if you're going to buy something, be conservative and look at the numbers and go, okay, if it goes up three to 5% each year, that would be what I'd be happy with. If you go in with that mindset, you're going to be really happy with your purchase. Now let's go to tip number two. Okay. So any building that you're going to consider buying a property and you should know what percentage of it is owner occupied and what percentage of it is rented out. There's a lot of condos in Toronto that if you're going to buy and live there yourself, I'd actually say to stay away from because they're 90% rented. And there's nothing wrong with these buildings. A lot of these buildings, when they were launched, were sold to investors and rented out, but things that are rented are just not always going to be in as good shape as things that are owned. So if I personally was going to be buying a Toronto condo, I would want to buy in a building that is minimum 50% owned rented, if not skewing to the owner side of things. You can figure this out by going over the last few years of rentals in the building and averaging out how many properties rent out every single year or in the status certificate documents. Sometimes the lawyer can tell you what percentage is owned versus rented. I would personally want to buy in a building that is mostly owner occupied. The only caveat to this is that if you're buying this property specifically to rent out, then having this type of building is going to be okay. The third tip is knowing your condominium fees or maintenance fees and your overall carrying costs because these fees don't go anywhere even if you fully paid off the mortgage to this condominium you're still every single month going to have to pay your taxes and your maintenance fees maintenance fees are calculated per square foot and depending on the building they can pay for your heat your water the building insurance the front desk the landscaping the window washing a lot of things are taken care of for you however these fees typically go up slowly every single year so it's something that you have to keep in mind that these fees are not going to go anywhere in newer building these fees typically start low but then start creeping up over the years and in older buildings these fees are going to be a lot higher because the building is older and there's more things to maintain but also typically the older buildings have bigger floor plans which means higher maintenance fees. Maintenance fees are not all bad, by the way. They do cover a lot of great things and take care of a lot of things and headaches that you don't want to deal with. That's one of the reasons why Ghana lifestyle is so nice, but it is something you need to consider. So when you're doing your overall carrying costs, it's going to be your mortgage plus your maintenance fees, plus your taxes, plus your insurance. Those are the four things you have to add up. That's what it's actually going to cost you on a monthly basis to own this property. Tip number four is price per square foot. So the Toronto condominiums sell per square foot. So on average right now in downtown Toronto, properties on the resale market are selling about $1,000 a square foot. So that means 600 square feet is $600,000. So when you're looking for a property in a specific building, you can figure out what this number is for the building, what this building is selling for per square foot. But it's not a perfect science. So sometimes very small units can actually sell for more per square foot than medium to larger size units. And then on the other end of the spectrum, luxury units with huge outdoor terraces and things like that can sell for even more per square foot, even though they're larger. So not every sale that happens in the building is apples to apples. The floor level that the building is on is going to make a difference. On top of that, if it has parking, it's going to make a difference. And it's also usable square footage. So if you have a condo and you walk in, and it has a real long hallway. That square footage is still calculated at the same cost per square foot, but it's not as usable. So you have to keep that in mind when you're buying these properties. Price per square foot is very important. And I think it's something you have to really figure out, but don't just base your offer based on some site that you found online that tells you what the average price per square foot is. There's a little bit more behind it. My number five tip is the wow factor. So I've been selling condos in Toronto for the better part of the last 10 years. And what I've noticed is that in good markets, everything sells. Every type of condo is selling, but in markets that are slower, and we experienced this in 2020 when condos aren't just flying off the shelf, the units with wow factors sell a lot quicker. So what does a wow factor mean? Well, I'd say if I'm looking for a condo right now, I try to find a space that has a really great floor plan. That can be a wow factor. Maybe an awesome view of the city or the water. That could be a wow factor. Even having parking for smaller units could be a wow factor. On top of that, you could have boutique buildings, loft style buildings, just something that's a little bit different because when the market's not great, 
if your condo doesn't have one of these wow factors, the price has to be the wow factor. So just something to keep in mind down the road. Look for that condo with the wow factor. Tip number six, and this kind of follows through what we were talking about with the wow factor, is there's two type of condos you're gonna buy in Toronto. You're gonna buy the cookie cutter, tall condo building glass, or you're gonna buy the boutique style, smaller, a bit more expensive loft style buildings. There's pros and cons for both types. You just have to decide what you're looking for. The loft style, you might not have a concierge, you have less amenities, but it's only, you know, five to 15 stories. So you don't have to wait for the elevator. On the other side, these tall cookie cutter condos have amazing views. They have full service, everything. They've got the pool, the pet spa, like everything you could think of. But sometimes it also means that your maintenance fees are going to be a bit higher. And I found that in markets that are a little bit slower, when the condos aren't flying off the shelves, like we were talking about before, the boutique style loft style condos are selling a little bit quicker than the cookie cutter stuff. And now we've come to tip number seven. If you're buying a condo in Toronto, please work with a local specialist. Our team ranked number three in all downtown condo sales in 2020. And this isn't me saying, hey, you have to call us, but please, work with someone that knows what they're doing. We know these buildings, these floor plans like the back of our hand. And it's not so much even like, which are the good buildings, it's us advising you, which are the bad buildings? Because sometimes you see buildings that look like a great deal on paper, but you don't realize all the issues you're gonna have if you end up purchasing in that building. So that's it. There is my seven tips for buying a Toronto condo. Did I miss anything? Did you have any questions? By the way, I didn't talk about location or staff certificate and things like that because I'm gonna do another video on that. But if you have any questions, please put them below. And if you'd like to book an appointment with us, all the information is in the description. Have an amazing day. Thank you so much for watching and remember, Home is where your story begins.